Data management is a field of computer science that deals with all aspects uh, for the efficient management of data. It deals with anything from storing data effectively, on magnetic disks, um, up to um, providing structures for the efficient retrieval of data, or for handling concurrency um, when data is accessed by different concurrent processes. It offers mechanisms for uh, recovery in cases of failures. And more importantly, it also offers mechanisms for optimizing the execution of queries. Mobile computing, on the other hand, is a field of computer science that deals with mobility. It deals with aspects uh, related to its hardware, to its software, and to its communication stack. So mobile data management uh, lies at the intersection of these two fields and it particularly attempts to study data that is generated uh, in a mobile environment. And in order to, in order to understand the importance uh, of this field, uh, we have to first uh, realize um, the uh, that mobility is nowadays uh, part of our everyday life. We carry along with us smartphones or cell phones and these uh, introduce uh, many different uh, sensing capabilities. They introduce uh, powerful processors, different connection modalities and more importantly they provide us access to um, a large ecosystem of software application that individualize the experience and allow us to uh, be more intelligent as human beings. So there are some particular challenges in this spectrum that we try to investigate uh, through our research and I will briefly attempt to go over them now. The first challenge uh, relates to big data. So since these smartphone and mobile devices feature many different sensors and these sensors generate lots and lots of data on a continuous basis, it means that existing infrastructures are not ready to adequately process and analyze this data in a timely manner. So the challenge here is to develop distributed and parallel algorithms that will analyze this data in a timely manner. A second challenge is that of privacy. Since mobile devices are carried around by real custodians, it really means that some service might uh, know things about our whereabouts. And, um, think about an application that knows, for instance, uh, your location at all times. So the challenge here is to develop techniques and algorithms that provide some new utility, but at the same time uh, also allow the user to control uh, the amount of information it wants to publicize. The third challenge relates to crowdsourcing and um, Computers are very uh, capable of storing and processing data. However, they have a difficult time in doing arbitrary things, such as finding, for instance, a ship in a set of uh, uh, images coming from satellites. So in that context, uh, smartphone users that could provide access to uh, this missing piece of knowledge um, and make computers more intelligent. So essentially the computers will outsource the difficult tasks to real humans. A fourth uh, challenge relates to uh, energy conservation since these devices are operated uh, with a limited energy source. It really means that we have to do conscious, uh, we have to devise energy conscious uh, algorithms. Uh, otherwise, 
these applications will not be able to operate. So I will now talk about uh, the topic of uh, KN processing. Um, let us consider a geometric space in which we have uh, certain points. So these points might be, for instance, the locations of users in a, a mobile uh, system, or there might be alternatively um, products in a data mining or machine learning uh, applications. So the, the description of products or alternatively, this could have been DNA sequences in a bioinformatics setting. So a KN query um, allows a system to identify for a given point the closest neighbors, the K closest neighbors. And there is an associated distance function that allows us to compute the distances of the query object against the other objects in the systems. So we will refer to this as points. An extension of this idea is the old KNN query that attempts to identify the closest neighbors for every single point in this geometric space. There are some algorithms that perform very poorly uh, to, in the computation of this problem. Uh, they have a quadratic complexity and um, even though the community suggested techniques that involve iterative deepening where for each point we um, increase uh, a search radius until we find the closest neighbors, it's still a challenging task, especially when data grows. In a big data setting, we have to parallelize the task of the KNN computation, of the AKNN computation, across a cluster of machines. So the basic idea is to partition the problem space into some uh, disjoint sets and ask individual processors to compute locally the KNN answer. Unfortunately, there are two challenges. The first challenge relates to the partitioning step itself. If we don't partition the space uh, in a fair manner, it means that certain nodes will receive more workload than others, and that will result in a prolonged execution, which uh, essentially the node with the, with that receives the, the, the most load will be on the critical path of the computation. The second challenge relates to the fact that there is state that has to be transferred between uh, commuting nodes. And that state um, is actually the bottleneck of the computation. In order to, to address the challenges in AKNN computations in a distributed setting, we devised two techniques. The first technique um, partitions the space using a um, histogram-based technique that um, does a partitioning of the space really quickly, but not fully optimally. Um, the, full, the optimal uh, distribution of objects would result with Voronoi uh, partitioning, but that partitioning takes considerable time. The second um, technique we develop is in uh, respect to the state transfer between nodes. So um, instead of transferring the complete state from one computation cell to the adjacent computation cell, we develop upon the ideas of Ronald Fagging in the seminal work of 2001 with the threshold algorithms that allows us to prune the search space considerably such that each cell knows what points are of interest to adjacent cells. In that way, we minimize the transfer of data across an expensive network channel. For the future, we aim to study more carefully multidimensional scenarios. It is well known that multidimensionality introduces a curse of dimensionality. Techniques work, working for lower order spaces don't work adequately well when you scale up the dimensions. And so another important um, piece in our research and our laboratory is that we try to go from basic uh, research from uh, the formulation of a problem 
um, to the development of algorithms and to the realization of real systems. So we were funded by Microsoft and Nokia uh, in Finland to develop an innovative um, uh, application um, that realizes uh, the AKNN processor. So the idea is to um, develop a social network where people will be able to interact with pe the closest people around them. For instance, if a person is in need, then that person can instantly propagate his help inquiry to the closest users around him. And the problem with other existing social networks is that these are founded on the premise of a social network. For instance, in Facebook or Twitter, we explicitly denote the relationship we have with others. And this is the social graph. However, the social graph is not necessary in location-based interactions because you aim to communicate with people that you don't know. And because of that, it has to be done in a, uh, you, you, have to, you have to have a way to compute the AKN and query in a really scalable way for millions of users every few seconds. And this, our developed algorithm essentially allows us to do this precise thing. And we are very happy that the system has been used by many users uh, across the globe, ranging from Hawaii to the United States, Europe, and even in India.